world economy, and another road to war. The early steps to war, of course, has to begin with the Treaty of Versailles at the end of World War I. In the Treaty of Versailles, there was the War Guilt Clause, which accused Germany of being uh, the instigator of war. And that is because um, the Balkan affair with Austria and Serbia, rather than staying a localized war, because Germany offered Austria a blank check, um, he, Germany gets the war guilt uh, clause. Also in the Treaty of Versailles, Germany lost territories and had a reduction in military forces. The worst part um, that would no doubt lead to war was reparations. Germany was to pay back the Allied powers um, an amount that in today's market uh, dollar value would be $269 billion. The Allied powers were all indebted to the United States because of borrowing money, buying war materials during World War I. So the major powers' economies were tied to the U.S. economy. So that in 1929, when the stock market crash hit German and Britain economies especially hard. A political cartoon of the day referring to the Versailles Treaty. The German people must pay for all damage to civilians on land or sea or from the air. So the European countries uh, are suffering economic pressures pressure to pay those war debts. This is during the 20s. They were reeling from the destruction of war. Their industries, uh, their cities were devastated by bombing, uh, by the fighting, uh, the trench warfare that was a very big part of World War I. So the industries were struggling to recover. This is in uh, all the countries of Europe. While the U United States economy influence in the world expanded during the 20s. The United States was producing a half of the world's industrial goods. The U.S. led in exports, private investments in the United, from the United States overseas had increased 500% during the 20s, which in the United States, remember, was a time of assumed Uh, economic boom. But all of this, um, European company, countries owing money to the United States, uh, Germany owing reparations to uh, Britain and France, is going to spread depression uh, around the world. This little chart, which can't see all of it, but the world woes 
There were high interest rates in Great Britain, decreased spending and high unemployment. Germany's reparations led to inflation, which crippled their economy. Foreign, United States foreign policy during the 20s um, took place with two or three different plans. For instance, the Dawes plan, and this is um, Dawes. The Dawes plan attempted to settle the conflict between France and Germany. Uh, Germany had defaulted on their debts to France. So France, in retaliation, sent troops to occupy the Ruhr, which was um, the Rhineland. That's, that's where the biggest part of Germany's uh, industry took place, their industrial complex, if you will. The Dawes Plan also sought to revive the German economy. So the United States is going to negotiate loans from U.S. banks to give to Germany, which the idea was to give Germany uh, the money necessary to pay Britain and France payments on reparations. Then in 1928, there was the Kellogg-Briand Pact, which outlawed war as an instrument of policy. It was signed by originally by 14 nations, and this is Frank Kellogg. He was the uh, Secretary uh, of State in the United States, and Aristide Briand, which was um, the French minister. And this pact was, again, uh, all the nations that signed it, originally 14, later the B-48 others that will sign, uh, was to promise that they would no longer consider war as an instrument of policy. But the problem with that is there was no provision for enforcing that act. So the international financial system um, another attempt to intervene by the United States, came through a plan uh, called the Young Plan, and it was negotiated by a man named Young, a financier. It was to reform the Dawes Plan. It reduced German reparations to $8 billion and allowed 59 years for repayment. So, with the United States sending loans to Germany, $2.5 billion in loans to Germany, so Germany could pay $2 billion to the Allies, and that would allow the Allies to pay $2.6 billion in war debts to the United States. So you can see that uh, the economies of the major nations of the world were all tied together. In Germany, because of the Versailles Treaty, the war guilt clause and the reparations, created a depressed political, social, and economic situation in Germany. There was widespread employment, 
um, which that was also the case in France and Britain, as well as the United States. But in Germany, it was a politically unstable situation as what had been an empire um, during the war, the empire was dismantled and a uh, socialist democrat government, the Weimar Republic was established. And it, there wasn't a lot of uh, support in Germany for the Weimar Republic. And in fact, um, many people, including Hitler, which was uh, who often and loudly proclaimed that it, it was a stab in the back. Um, during the war, Germans only received the war news that put Germany in a good light. So most Germans believed that they were winning the war. So when defeat came, it was a shock to many. And because Weimar, the Weimar Republic government were the ones that signed the Versailles Treaty, uh, it did not have a good reputation in Germany. And it created a great deal of bitterness over loss of and blame for the war. But also during this time in Germany, there was rampant anti-Semitism as the Jews received the blame for most of the ills, economic um, and for other reasons. Germany had um, severe hyperinflation in fact, uh, the German mark, which was their equivalent of the American dollar, um, became uh, lost value, increasingly lost value. Also during this time, paramilitary groups and attempted coups troubled Germany. Um, this was a photograph that was taken of men that were gathering to take part in what was called the Beer Hall Putsch in Munich that was led by Adolf Hitler. Uh, Hitler was arrested for his part in that attempted coup, which it was a failure. As a result, Hitler was imprisoned for five years. And while he was in prison, he wrote um, his book called Mein Kampf, or My Struggle. And if anybody had any other political uh, politicians, other countries, if they had read this book, um, things might have gone quite a bit differently because in this book, Hitler spells out his um, desire to create the perfect Aryan, um, his anti-Semitic ideas, very blatant. Um, he pretty much laid out his plans that he wanted to institute in Germany. Not only in Germany, but also other countries, there's the rise of totalitarianism. Now, the Nazi party in Germany um, was a type of totalitarian government. In Italy, there was Mussolini. Uh, Spain, uh, fascist uh, contenders in Spain created a civil war um, situation. And Japan, 
in Japan, it was a militaristic type of totalitarianism, a very strong military led by um, this man. Let's look at Hitler on this road to war. Uh, Hitler became not only a part of, but a leader of the Nazi party. Um, he used the method of uh, propaganda to his advantage. Uh, also taken advantage of the depressed situation in Germany, so that by 1933, <clears throat> Hitler has gained control of Germany. Hitler had a great deal of passion and charisma that served to unite Germans for his cause. He exploited the bitterness that was present in the country, um, he preached his uh, ideas for the superiority of the Aryan race, pure Germans, and fueled the hatred for Jews, which, as an aside, um, Hitler himself had a Jewish grandfather. In fact, his grandfather was a rabbi. Uh, so Hitler himself was not pure Aryan. But he used the techniques and the technology available to spread his doctrine. If you ever have watched a newsreel of Hitler giving a speech, um, it is kind of frightening. He didn't really have a lot of content to his speeches, but there was a lot of passion. There was a lot of um, used his his voice and hand gestures, and uh, he could just create uh, his audience in a spellbound situation. Uh, and before very long, Hitler will begin an aggressive expansion of Germany. First of all, even though the Versailles Treaty said that Germany um, could not have a military, Hitler begins rebuilding the military. And he goes about it in such a way that it's that it's covertly, in a sense. Um, he establishes youth camps where he trains children in his militaristic ideas. Um, and he builds these groups of the young in particular uh, in a military consciousness. Remember that France had sent troops in to take over the Rhineland uh, because Germany wasn't paying reparations. Um, but by 1936, the French are gone and German troops regain the Rhineland. 1938, Nazi troops march into Austria and annex Austria to Hitler's. Uh, we can't say for sure that it isn't just speculation. Lori, for sure that it isn't just speculation. Sorry about that. Um, so Nazi troops march into Austria, take over. Then they seize the Sudetenland which was um, part of Czechoslovakia, where there were a lot of German 
uh, speaking people. And Hitler excused that by saying he's just making a living space for Germans, uniting Germans. France and Britain, which are uh, overcome with their own problems of uh, failing economy and depression, unemployment, uh, they agree to ignore Hitler's movements. This uh, political cartoon by Dr. Seuss, um, ho hum, when he's finished pecking down that tree, he'll quite likely be finished. So all the different um, aggressive moves that Hitler makes because they're France and Britain are so consumed with their own domestic problems that they agree to ignore Hitler's movements. It's okay, he's just uniting Germans, but what Hitler is doing, um, again, another uh, cartoon, reparations, but Hitler is adding a P in front of that sign, making preparations. And that's what he's doing. The United States makes an early stand. That is, Franklin Roosevelt called for a quarantine of aggressor nations. Wanted to, uh, Americans wanted to keep out of war, but they wanted to be neutral. They didn't want to get involved in the problems of Europe. They built a wall of neutrality. Neutrality Acts of 1935 through 37 made it illegal to sell or transport war materials to any of the belligerents, uh, to the Allies or the Ax Axis powers. And any exports to belligerents were to be paid for with cash. Any exports. This is, I mean, no war materials at all. But any other exports, whether it's uh, cotton or wheat or whatever, the belligerents had to pay for it with cash. And the Neutrality Act of 1937 made it illegal to give loans or credits to any of the belligerents, which included Britain and France. But Hitler's aggression opens the door to war. He's led troops uh, to invade Poland September the 1st, 1939, which caused Britain and France to declare war on Germany September the 3rd, 1939. Germans invade and bomb Poland and Britain mobilizes. Hitler invaded Norway and Denmark in April and May of 1940. Italy and Japan joined Germany to create the Axis powers. Then on December 7th, 1941, Japan bombs Pearl Harbor. Japan opens war on the United States. Hawaii is attacked and bombed. Then the Axis powers declare war on the United States. Now, the United States declared war against Japan on, and I don't have this on there, not sure why, um, declared war on Japan in, on December the 9th, 1941. Um, but then Germany and Italy declare war on the United States and the United States declared a state of war with Germany on December the 11th, 1941. 
U.S. now at war with Germany and Italy. Japanese checked in all land fighting. So on. So the world, again, is at war.